<laughs> so, uh, wow, this is fun. <laughs> fun visit to Microsoft Office Land, Building 36. Yeah. And uh, who are you? So, uh, my name is Chris Capicella. Yeah. And I'm a senior vice president with. Uh, the information worker group at Microsoft. And what the heck does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> so it, we know, most people know about Microsoft Office or Microsoft right. Windows. So I, start with that context. Where, where do you fit in there? Yeah, right? yeah. So it's a group that really focuses on building a whole bunch of products and solutions uh, for a really, really broad segment of, of uh, computing users. Yeah. And we call them information workers. Uh, it used to be that Office was very focused on. Um, the concept of a knowledge worker, you yeah. know, the Peter Drucker term for uh, typically a white collar worker who worked in sort of a glass building, yeah. if you will. And uh, so office, that was sort of the bread and butter for a long, long time. But about eight to 10 years ago, we kind of tried to take a broader view of uh, people who we could help with, with technology, and we called them information workers. Yeah. And it really meant that it was anybody who dealt with information as part of their job. Yeah. So doctors are typically you know, a classic information worker, but they don't use office. They never really have. Um, pilots would be another one. Someone on a loading dock at a grocery store. Yeah. You know, they typically have a clipboard and they fill out forms. You know, they're actually dealing with information yep. uh, as they do their job of unloading the trucks as they come in and, and you know, loading up the Safeway, if you will. Yep. Uh, and so we broadened our remit. We renamed our team. Instead of just calling us the office team, we renamed it to the information worker team to be a little more customer centric yep. and less about the product. And you know, since that time, the product set that we've built has really, really evolved. Uh, Word and Excel and PowerPoint and Outlook are, are you know, used as much as ever, a yep. lot more than five years ago. But we've built new products and new things to try to address the needs of people what? who, you know, who do some of that work. Well, let's talk about it. I, I just started last week a new show called uh, Work Fast, which yes. is all on how work is changing. Because I noticed that some people, their work life is still, you know, Pretty Office insane. 2000. You know, right. I, right. I see them on the planes, right? You know, they have an right. old Dell with Office 2000 and <laughs> yes. Windows, you know, 2000, 2000. sometimes. Right. Or uh, I, I've even seen Windows ME still used out there. It's <laughs> like, oh, why are you still using them? But, right. you know, it's still out there. Is That's that true. the challenge? Is, is uh, how do you design something that, that for me and you are, 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 are going to be used? You know, because we're... I'm working on my mobile phone now. Right. I'm working on the latest, you know, Vista computers, and I have the latest tools like tablet PCs. Yes. And, and uh, you know, so I'm a, a quite different customer than somebody who has Office 2000 and is right. not really pushing the boundaries and just their entire computing experience is like Excel. Yes. You know, that's all they deal with, and email. That, right. You know, I watch people on the pl on the plane how they work, and that's, you know, sometimes that's. What they do, that's it. that's it. They do a yeah. spreadsheet and they do email, and that's yep. their entire experience with the computer. Yeah, even more, more. Another example of that would be PowerPoint and mail, yeah. where you see people traveling. You can tell they're getting ready for a sales presentation or a marketing presentation, and you know those are those are sort of their uh, the oxygen that they breathe as part of their job. Yeah. You know, there there are essentially a couple of ways for Microsoft to change that. One is, um, you know, to really get end customers enthusiastic about new things that they can do. Yeah. And those things could be on the phone, those things could be on a new PC, those things could be in a browser. Uh, and those are three really important endpoints yeah. for us. So doing you know, a great job with Outlook on a phone is an example. Yeah. Doing a great job with PowerPoint or Word on a phone is an example. Getting that end user really, really excited. Doing the new UI in Office 2007 to try to show people that yeah. you don't need 38 toolbars in Word to have a great experience writing a document. We can do much, much better. Yeah. There'll be some How did that go, by the way? It's gone, it's gone very, very well. Because some people are, are still adverse to change. Exactly. You know? But other people, they realize, man, I'm, I'm getting a lot more, I'm doing a lot more and not having to look through all these menus. I, yeah. I, I, I did the interview with uh, Julie, Julie uh, about why she was the designer yep. who explained why they did all these changes and they explained some tasks took two hours right. you know, to do like a really complex table and now yeah. it takes a few minutes just yeah. because you go click, 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 click. And Using the changes. gallery, it's right built in. Yeah. yeah. You know, for a change of that magnitude where you're touching a tool that everybody, uh, not everybody, lots and lots of people know so well, we've been very, very pleased with how it's gone. Yeah. You know, one of the things we learned was the more advanced users, somebody who just knew Excel inside and out, uh, those users take longer to love the new product. It takes them like two weeks 
of using the new product a decent amount before they'll say, I never want to go back to the old one. Yeah. The more basic users, maybe the ones you're seeing on the plane, yeah. they actually like the new product much, much faster because yeah. they probably didn't know every nook and cranny of, of PowerPoint and they start to say, wow, I can do so much more, uh, more quickly. Um, but in general, people have been very, very pleased. And 2007, Office 2007 has been a huge, huge seller for us. You know, we've sold far more of that product than any other version of Office in a comparable period of time. So that that is really great. And exciting that end person, that end user, yeah. with something like an Office 2007 is one way for us to address what you're talking about. The other way, though, yeah is to go to uh, the business leaders inside of companies and to show them the new things they can do with SharePoint yeah. Server, to show them the new things that Exchange Give me a couple server. ideas, what, what, yeah. what you're showing off to people. Hey, you can do this if you have SharePoint. If you SharePoint, upgrade your you know? infrastructure in your company, yeah. your end users actually get lots of benefits that they're not going to know to ask you for, but you can provide to them. Um, you know, there are a couple of really simple examples. One with SharePoint is just the simple idea of having a collaboration uh, infrastructure where teams can create their own collaboration websites and put their documents and add team members to and now everybody's getting to the same copy of their PowerPoint deck or their you know Excel files and they can check in and check out and have version control and know that they can even invite people who don't work at their company and be able to collaborate in a cross-company way. How does everybody do that today? It's what you said, it's email, yeah. and it's email attachments. Yeah. So for you and me, that we take that stuff for granted. We've been doing that for four or five years, probably. Yeah. The vast majority of people who work at companies, that's actually, wow, I can do that? You yeah. know, that's, that's great. And the IT people like it because they get control. You know, they, they run that server. They can back up that stuff. They, you know, they know how to do it in a compliant way. But the end user sort of gets this new service that they didn't even know to ask for. Yeah. So that's one example. Another and that really, really gets to the email overload problem. I yeah. mean, I, you, you know the email pro overload because everybody at Microsoft is an e email crazy, <laughs> crazy person. We have person, an email right? crazy culture here. Yeah. So you know, it, um, I, I've talked to a couple companies who are starting to use these new, newer collaborative tools, yeah. and one guy said, "Well, I, you know, I used to email to ten people a, a, a press release, yeah. right, as a, an attachment, and." That generated ten emails, right? right? One one email going out to ten people, and then if all ten of those people do, does a change to that document and re-emails it around everybody, it it generates hundreds of emails, right? right? And where it should really only generate ten emails, yeah. right? Which is one time point to a server URL where That's the right. document is, and then you edit it online, right? And and then uh, you know everybody can see those revision changes. That's and, right. And so right from with an Outlook. But how do you sell that? You know, that, oh, you know, it's not hard. <laughs> it's well, not it's hard. not hard when you're in a big company, right? But the normal person is like, doesn't really think about it, right? Well, there's, a, cha there's a change dimension to it. You know, yeah. and if you can't, how do you change how people do their daily job? You know, that, that is not a simple thing. Yeah. But, you know, you always have a set of people who are looking to do things better. You always have a set of people who like to play with things, who like to tinker. Even at big companies that you think, boy, the vast majority of people, they're never going to learn a new way. You'd actually be surprised. Oh, yeah. Inside of any company, you've got the people who are always playing with the latest stuff. And they're the person that, you know, you walk down the hall to ask them a question when your computer breaks or when something you're not quite sure how to do something. And when those people start emailing you and saying, hey, everybody, let's work on the press release together, and there's no attachment, instead there's a link, then nine people say, oh, and they click on that thing. And if it works well, if it integrates with the tools they use, if it's easy enough to use, all of a sudden you start creating five converts out of those nine yeah. and you know they tell two friends and they two tell friends and, and so on and so on. So isn't it is that, very grassrootsy. Isn't that Microsoft's marketing challenge because the, Microsoft doesn't get credit a lot for having the leading tools because nobody, a lot of people don't know about them and the tinkerers get frustrated at the IT people who yeah. don't buy the latest <laughs> <laughs> services, you know, they don't have SharePoint maybe yeah. loaded up and so they don't get to play with the latest stuff Microsoft does and so they go out and try Zoho or try right. Google or try some other free service. That, Office Live. You know, or Office Live, right? Right. And, and, uh, but a lot of times Microsoft doesn't get the credit for having those collaborative tools that, that are pretty bleeding yeah. edge. You know, we don't get the credit in Silicon Valley. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I don't expect us to get the credit in Silicon Valley. I don't have a, you know, I don't have a goal of of trying to get that credit. You just yeah. expect that to be the case. 
um, there. But I absolutely think many, many companies look to us to provide innovative solutions that actually work well within the, within the business context. Yeah. And they're very cautious of the, the sort of Web 2.0 for Web 2.0's sake. Yeah. They want to know, hey, how do I take advantage of social networking? How do I take advantage of uh, Web 2.0 given that I also have compliance needs or given that I also want to be able to back stuff up and know that if I back it up, I, you know, I get to set the rules for how we back stuff up. Uh, if I need to search all my email for some legal thing, I know how to do that. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't mind if Silicon Valley doesn't give us credit for the fact that SharePoint is unbelievably successful. Yeah. I know that we're doing a great job in the marketplace and customers absolutely see it. It, you know, we focus more on how do we get customers to adopt the innovation as opposed to necessarily getting that cred. Yeah. Because it's just very, very hard to overcome the newness factor of other companies. Yeah. And the fact we've been around now for 30 years, by definition, people are going to think of us as as old school. Yeah. And you know, as long as we're doing a great job bringing the innovation, and I'd say SharePoint is one of our best examples, you know, that that's that's great success. Interesting. Uh, and that that's kind of what you got to focus on. Are customers using our stuff? Are they buying our stuff? Yeah. Uh, and then you get you get the credibility over time. The press would never talk about SharePoint three years ago. No. Now more and more people, maybe not the mainstream press, yeah. but more and more people recognize, wow, that thing has taken off. Yeah. And that, you know, that's Well, you can see it in the there. bottom line, right? Yes, that's <laughs> right. Know? That's right. When so, things you know, start have... making billions of dollars, right. <laughs> the press has to <laughs> pay attention, even yeah. if they don't want we, to, right? We have to be patient yeah. about that and know that that is sort of a big hill for us to, to climb, as long as we're, as long as we're you know, getting the results. That, what are good. some things that are like, like SharePoint was three years ago? Ago, that, that, that are the you're next working, wave. you're yeah. working on, and you're excited about, yeah. but you know that you know other people don't. Tech bloggers like yet. me are not, not giving Microsoft credit <laughs> on. Or whatever. Well, you know, I think there are, there are a couple. One one is the is the whole voice area. You know, today mm. I essentially use my PC as my phone, and all the phone calls that come in to me, they show up on my PC. Yeah. When someone leaves me a voicemail, it's right in my inbox. Literally, when my phone rings, my laptop or my PC rings simultaneously with my mobile phone. And so however I want to set things up, I'm essentially getting rid of my desk phone, yeah. and I'm using my mobile phone and my PC as my only voice experience. Yeah. And on my phone, I mean on my PC, I can do so much more than I ever learned to do on my desk phone. Yeah. I can actually conference call people in. You know, it's amazing. I can go from an instant messaging session right to a video call, or a voice call then to a video call. So I can do one-on-ones wow. with people who are in France and we're seeing each other with yeah. you know beautiful high definition video uh, that is a really really good experience. Yeah. I attended a meeting where there are 30 people in Thailand, and it was Halloween. It was you know it was the day of Halloween. They really wanted me to go to Thailand. I have a I have a little girl at home. I'm not going to miss Halloween. There's just no way. So they brought this round table device, you know, this device that is yep. essentially like a polycom, but yep. it's got five cameras on sort of a, a little swivel thing, and they put it in the middle of the room. I sat here with my laptop. I wasn't there. I attended the meeting for like seven hours, and I stay, still, you know, got to go to Halloween the next night with my with my child. And I was in that meeting. You know, and more and more moment. of that's going to happen because of the gas prices. That's and, right. And global warming. That's Because right. every time you take energy to fly somewhere, that's you're, right. you're, you're helping pollute the air. <laughs> There's no doubt. And, There's and no you're going to pay more. And the more cost and, of a ticket to Thailand is not. And it's going up because of the gas. That's uh, exactly the, right. you, you already see today United Airlines said they're ch charging for, for the, the bag. second bag. That's, you know? No, I think the first bag. Oh, the first bag. The or, first bag they're going to charge wow. for. Which is which is a big change, and that you know that solution is not some fancy three hundred thousand dollar, you know I didn't go to some special room that had all this massive video conferencing yeah. equipment. It was literally that phone is like a three thousand dollar device, and if you look at the cost of you know a lot of those devices, that's that's nothing. Yeah. And I was literally sitting with my laptop with a webcam, you know a forty dollar webcam, and I could see the entire room three hundred and sixty degree view. It was all it was awesome. So it's not just, oh, Microsoft can afford some big fancy video conferencing infrastructure yeah. like, like has Cisco, existed. Cisco has these. Of course. They show off these beautiful these, HD rooms that are 300 grand. Right. right. And it's like, okay, that's great, but this is actually a very afford affordable way to do that. So that, that is something that a lot of people can do today, and more and more people will do it you know, sort of in the future. And then obviously the other big one for us is just this, the, um, 
the removing the seams between the personal uh, the personal computing experience and the work computing experience. So the fact that today SharePoint is mostly used in a work context, and then you have people doing things you know on the web for their personal context, yeah. that's very that's a very bad. Um, Context yeah, they, switching to they ask put their photos on Flickr or Facebook at home. Yeah, or and they have a lot of workers on Facebook. I mean, Siemens right. told me they had seventeen percent of their workforce was on Facebook already. Incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. And that was six months ago. Yes, <laughs> so it's probably twenty nine percent now. That's <laughs> right. So we have the opportunity to really help people blur that line between the computing services that they use yeah. for their home life and for their for their work life. And it's something I think we're kind of uniquely positioned to do because we really understand what have I what does IT need and what do end users actually really want. Yeah. And they aren't always in agreement over those two things. And I think unlike IBM, who really lives and breathes IT, and unlike the Web 2.0 companies that really breathe the consumer world and try yeah. to kind of throw it up there for enterprises, uh, we we're better positioned to try to do both, yeah. and you know do a great job with Office as a great end user experience, and also make it very very. Um, uh, something that IT can really embrace with all their list of things that they need. Yeah. And that, that's a tricky balance to walk. Very cool. So those are a couple examples. Excellent. And we're, what are we going to see in a demo today? So yeah, I know you've already had a chance to see this this uh, service that we call Office Live, yeah. which is essentially a way for people to collaborate you know, with their Office documents, or really with any document, up in the cloud, totally kind of unmanaged. You know, there's no IT person that has to get involved in that. Uh, we thought we'd show you uh, a corollary service that's really focused on uh, business, the business needs, and IT people will typically buy mail on behalf of like their entire organization. Okay. They don't want to tell their organization to go sign up one at a time for Hotmail, you know. But they also uh, typically they'll buy Exchange. But they have to run those Exchange servers themselves. They have to patch them themselves. When we do a new version, they have to say, oh, am I going to upgrade to this new version or not? Like you said, the end user wants the latest stuff, but IT always struggles with having the latest stuff available. So one of the things we've introduced is this uh, set of services called our online services. Okay. So our live services, Windows Live, Office Live, Xbox Live, those are very focused on an end user who just wants to go and sign up. Yeah. They're typically ad funded. There's typically no business control. You just go, you sign up, it's free, go at it. Our online services uh, are actually more geared towards businesses, yeah. where someone's going to decide on behalf of their department, or maybe their whole company, hey, we're going to make a choice for our CRM solution, our email solution, our collaboration solution. We're going to buy on behalf of 100 people or 1,000 people, but we're not going to run it ourselves. Yeah. We want someone else, Microsoft, a Microsoft partner, to run it up in their data center, but we want it to be just like Exchange. And that's kind of what we're doing. Exchange online, SharePoint online, CRM online. And so there's this really nice symmetry between Exchange server that you can run yourself or Exchange online that will run. We'll keep it up to date. When we come up with a new version, boom, the new version will be up and you'll be converted. You don't have to roll anything out. When there's a security problem, we patch it. All the benefits of a service, but you know it's a sort of mission critical enterprise class piece of software. So I thought I'd show you the Exchange online, SharePoint online, that sort of set of stuff since you've seen our end user stuff already. Very cool. Well, okay. thank you very much. My pleasure. Let's take a look. Thanks. Thanks. So uh, uh, what, what kind of demo do you have for me today? So I want to walk you through a process where a typical uh, IT pro, an IT administrator, who wants to sort of start thinking about online services, what is his experience going to be? OK. okay. So, so what I have here is, is sort of the initial starting page, where yeah. we ask all the IT pro to kind of come and learn about our service. It's just Microsoft.com, WAC, online. Okay. So we make it very easy process for them to learn. Like something that Chris said earlier about the ideas, they're always challenged by the end users, showing them the latest, greatest, but very difficult to kind of get that environment up and going. Yeah. The key difference is, is going to be the administration experience. Okay. I mean, that's the part I'll show you. Okay. So this is the administration console. So if you are running your own Exchange server, obviously you have to log into the your you know the Exchange server. Yeah. And then you, you know, administrating SharePoint, you have to go to the SharePoint Administration Center. Yeah. So one idea of having an online service is kind of the one place where you can go in there and, and be able to manage all your services. Okay. So if I, by the way, if I have an ex existing Exchange server in yeah. my business, and that server maybe is getting overloaded, or mm -hmm. you know, my disks are starting to yeah. fill up, and I'm like, oh, 
do I really want to buy more equipment and, yeah. and build out a data center? Why don't I just move it all over here? Can I do that? It, definitely, and we provide a set of tools that okay. we allow you to do that. And th that touches very important business-specific requirements. Because a lot of customers actually don't want to move the entire company to online. Yeah. They may decide by geography, by the user set, maybe they're branch office users, they want to move to online, but maybe they're headquarters, they still want to run their server. Okay. But name one those kind of interoperability is one of the key things that we built into the online services. Okay. Okay. So what are we looking at here? So this is the initial login screen for the IT administrator. So as you can see, it's a very simple, easy to understand screen where basically here you can see the status of our service, whether it's healthy, any issues for you. Um, so in this case, this, uh, this particular IT administrator is subscribed to two services, yeah. Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. Yeah. And over time, as we introduce more services, you will just see additional services here. Um, and here you manage their users, yep. right? That's the next tab. So you understand, you know, from a licensing perspective, what you have. Uh, then you can take a list of the users. So here's a very interesting part. So here on the online environment, I have four users, yep. right? So these are people that I have provisioned either an Exchange service for them or a SharePoint service. But on the other list, here's a list of users that's currently in my Active Directory. Yeah. They may I might decide, say, you know, for this other location, I want to continue to run on my you know, my own local servers, yep. or I'm in transition. We actually provide you a set of tool that leverage an Active Directory to synchronize between those two worlds. Okay. So that if I'm a user in either environment, I can connect with the other users as though they're all in one place. Yeah. So that's one of the important things that we introduce is this idea of coexistence between the two worlds. Okay. So if I fire somebody, um, like Rocky, <laughs> yep. I can turn off his email address. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it was, Rocky's my yeah. producer. Really. Actually, what better is what you would usually do is you would first delete him in your Active Directory. Yeah. Right. And then actually, that will automatically synchronize with us. Okay. So when that is deleted, you know, you are in control of that, and automatically was sent to our side, and that get deleted. Okay. So it's really, you know, it's really about synchronizing all your corporate IT environments that Very you cool. have. And then when you ever decide, say, look, I. I think I want to move this person to the online world. Yeah. So all I have to do is just click that user and just activate the account. Okay. And then what you see is that you can decide what's the, what's the policy you want to give this user. You know, the size of the mailbox, the limits, right? Yeah. Does, does he have access to just ex, uh, e email or do you have SharePoint or they want live meeting? So it's all kind of in your control. Decide how you want to provision that user. Now do these choices affect the cost of the service that I'm paying Microsoft? If I have 100 employees, do I? Do yeah, I, and do I see how much this is costing me to turn on like SharePoint well, or turn, right. so you, turn on more storage or whatnot? Yeah, so there's basically there is you know a provisioning. So similar to your okay. buyout regular license, the same way that you purchase online licenses. Okay. So you have these set of online licenses that is free for you to allocate to your user base. Got it. As you need to. Okay. And you always can obviously buy more. Cool. I'm just thinking about the storage because. Yep. And that's exactly the same way. You can always buy more storage, um, yeah. and we also have this concept of pool storage which is the idea that you know, we can aggregate, we provide a limit, a, you know, one gigabyte of storage per users, and over time, we're able to aggregate those storages. So you can yep. decide how much each user gets. Some can get more, some can get less. It's sort of up to you to decide. Very cool. Okay. So I won't go through this whole process of activation, but that's really one of the key part of it, is being able to do that. Um, and then support. Support is this idea about you know, being able to go to one single place to get your issue resolved. Okay. Right? Whether disregard which service it is. So there's a there's an electronic ticketing system that you have here. We we'll yep. also provide a twenty four seven help desk that you can call okay. well, IT admin to answer any questions. So if we're getting a bug or something that, yeah. and our users aren't able to log yeah. on, I right. have somebody to call. Right. You can call them there and then you will escalate it, you know, depends on the you know severity of it. And then you also can see the status here all the time on you know, how we're doing with them. It's very nice. Yeah. And the other part then is these kind of the service settings. So here you get to the individuals part of the services. So for example, let me show, as I show you so much of Exchange, I show you SharePoint. So here at SharePoint, you basically again you have a kind of a set of storage that you have for your whole entire company. Yeah. And then based on that, you can decide how you want to allocate on the per site. And do you get all the goodness that comes with a corporate SharePoint, you know, uh, searching across users, you know? When I worked here at Microsoft, yeah. I loved being able to go and search for share, share for uh, PowerPoint documents and, or presentations and stuff like that. You know, and and I could find yeah. stuff across the company. Do I get that? Yeah. So for here? any of all the sites that you have here, you'll be able to search across all those. Very cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. So, I, so just, and after that is, you know, what a great thing about it is that to the end user it is transparent. Yeah. So they wouldn't know really a big difference between now is, you know, whether you're hosted through your own company or they're hosted online. Yeah. And then we'll be able to kind of deliver them the latest, greatest features. Do you, if I buy a Microsoft Online, do I get my own URL? And, you know, or is it Microsoft Online slash, you know, Fast no. Company? Or is it's, it Fast like Company? Like, if you look at this case, the door. So I, I'm switching back to the online part, which is easier to show. Yeah. So here, I actually set up my own domains. Ah, okay. So I actually are, you know, you authenticate yourself. So it is, you know, you know, David at, in this case, this consulting company called ModernHarveyConsulting.com. Yeah. That's exactly how it looks like. And you actually can have multiple domains. Very so cool. you have a West branch, East branch, whatever you like. And I, I know there's a bunch of exchange hosting services out there. What, why go with Microsoft? Is it the 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 data center knowledge yeah. that you guys have? I mean, I know you guys have huge data centers all over the world. I think Is it's that, this idea of choice, actually. Yeah. I mean, I think there's, you know, I think our partners do a great job in a lot of scenarios that we probably wouldn't do. Yeah. So one thing we say is that you know, the service is great, but it's probably not for everybody. Okay. And what's the great thing about with Microsoft, this whole software plus service idea is that you can decide whether you want to continue to run on premise because you have some regulatory issue that requires you to have data that sits in your own data center yeah. that you get in you know, audit, then you can continue to do that. But then if there's other scenarios where you want, you know what, I just want partners to host exactly the way I have designed it, yeah. right? And that's an outsourcing business. Right, and we still we love to have, and we have a lot of partners that do that very well, right. and and then every customer we just want a you know very standardized, massively massively scalable, but then always kind of up to date, and they want a direct relationship with Microsoft from a service provider, and this is the the next choice they have. Right. Cool. So it's actually not really one or the other, but really you know providing customer another yet another choice for them to get the latest greatest. Very cool. Thanks for a little tour yeah. around uh, the online services. You're welcome. <laughs>